Starts off with a flooded strand. Down to 19 goes man. We'll see which one drop he does have to play, and it'll be the best one, its favorite hoplite. Yeah, so man on the play here, that's good. that figures to be pretty good for him, as a lot of Brad's removal does cost three mana. There's a chance that man can sneak under a lot of it. Opulent Palace there for Nelson, so he does have a tri to lead things off, getting his mana all sorts of fixed up. Is he in man's hand? He at least has a copy of Stratus Walk. The question is, does he have maybe a second land, a source of blue mana, all that jazz? Some of the problems that Heroic is known to have, but if it all does come together appropriately, it's a very, very difficult deck to beat. Yeah, so we'll see how Man wants to basically plan out his strategy as far as how quick does he want to put auras on creatures, uh, does, if whether or not he wants to, to make the creature as big as fast as he can, or whether he wants to protect it as much as he can. Uh, the cards he has to worry about from Brad are post-board Brad has three copies of Bioblight, Extra Heroes Downfalls, and th actually two copies of Av Kiora the Crashing Wave. And those are, I think, the most problematic cards for Man. That Kiora is terrifying. I don't think he wants anything to do with that. Wouldn't be surprised if that's how Brad was able to win game number two. And but that's we'll just something see. you would expect out of Brad Nelson. So he is, has shown week in, week out just how good he is at metagaming in these kind of events. So to see Brad rather than playing some, showing up playing something like Heroic to play a deck like Reanimator, but just happen to have Kioras in the sideboard, that's, that's Brad Nelson at its best right there. City so Wayfinder does come down for Nelson on turn number two. You see him turn over a couple cards there, among them Hornet Queen. Big one to get into play if he can. Man, with just a pretty innocent turn last turn, honestly. Just a Stratus Walk. Not the blue enchantment that he was looking for. He's looking for Ordeal of Thassa to pair up with Favorite Hoplite, but it has not shown itself just yet. As here's a Temple of Enlightenment. That's land number three. Little scry action here. We'll see where Man wants to put that top card. Looks like it's staying on top for the moment, but we'll see exactly what happens as he does resolve the scry, and it will stay on top as he does send in here for two points of damage and pass the turn back over to Nelson. Nelson at 16 to start his third turn, picks up a copy of Thoughtseize. Well, you're right that Straswalk isn't normally the aura that these decks want on turn two. Man's opening hand had a lot of the good tools in it. It had lands, it had a creature, it had auras, it had a lot of protection, but it actually didn't have a way to make a creature large. So he was kind of on the protect the one-two style hand. So he needs to get an aura of some sort, preferably an ordeal, that makes his creature a threat so that Brad can no longer ignore it. And with Straswalk, he was trying to draw into that. This is a thought season. In response, man is going to cast a Defiant Strike, an unusual play. But it makes a little more sense now because it allows him to stubborn denial the thought sees as favorite hoplite. It's very angry with four power. Exactly. He brought it up to a four three. He couldn't just play the stubborn denial regularly because Brad had the second mana. Pluto Delta will be sacrificed here by Nelson. He'll go down to 15 as he does fetch out a land. We'll see if it'll be an island or a swamp, and it'll be a swamp here for Nelson. Two mana will allow him to cast a murderous cut, so bye bye favorite hoplite. Now here is an attack for one. And that is huge for Brad. Yes, his Thoughtseize got countered, but by spending the Stubborn Denial on Thoughtseize, what this meant from Steven was that he lost his creature in the situation. Yeah, and we know how fragile the creatures can be in this deck. God's Willing was not available there for man in that situation as his third land did come into play tapped. So all of a sudden, the House of Cards has crumbled, and now he's got to rebuild it again. Man will draw a card. It's another Stubborn Denial, and off that Defiant Strike, he got an Ordeal of Thassa, so he can rebuild here, actually. Well, we're going to have to be a little more honest with the 04 this time in the Trailblazer. It comes with Bioblight insurance. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's part of the reason that people play this card is you can't Bioblight, you can't Lightning Strike it. The additional point of toughness is very, very nice, but the no power is the bad part of it. His man just has to pass the turn back over to Nelson. Nelson will pick up a copy of Bioblight for his draw. Opulent okay. Palace's land number four, and it'll just pass the turn back. You know, if there was a really popular Sly deck or Red deck wins, you'd feel better about playing this card, but it's still amusing that this 04 for one, this Yoked Ox style card, is seeing a lot of play, even when there's nothing really for it to block. Can't be too proud to play the 04. Can't be too proud. Plus, hey, you can build that thing up. A lot of toughness with that. Man's going to play one. Flooded Strand. It does just cost one. Man, not really making a move here. Nelson very quickly going to cast this at EC. It's time to trigger. Take a look at the top three. Any creatures in there? Absolutely. It's a Farika. Zombie's going to join the party and pass the turn back. Will Nelson over to Man. Do have some updates for you guys on how matches are going. 
Chris Van Meter up a game here over Tom Ross. Dylan Donegan up a game over Jeff Hoagland. Fabiano and Kevin Jones, you guys saw them move over to the feature match area. They're going to game number three. If we have time to jump over there, we will. And it looks like Ketter and Duke are headed to game number three as well. And Sidisi can be problematic for the heroic deck in a couple of ways. One, it's a great supply of chump blockers. So even if man makes a big creature, as long as that creature doesn't have an aqueous form or a stratus walk on it, Brad can just chump and race. On top of that, Sidisi's a lot of power. If, as you see right now, it made five power for four mana. This means that if Brad at any point gets a whip of Erebos in when man's shields are down, he'll gain a ton of life and maybe enough that he can just ignore a lot of man's attacks again. Man's gonna have to do something now. He can't just sit back and do nothing. It's time to maybe make that 04 into a 1-5. Perhaps a 2-6. If they both start drawing cards, Brad will draw Mythic Rares while Man will draw commons. And eventually <laughs> Brad's will overpower him. Hornet Queen versus favorite hoplite. I'm not sure who wins that battle. Right. Well, I suppose that's not true. I think I have a pretty good idea as there is a favorite hoplite enjoying the table there for Man. Man does not want to play into the late game. That's the last place that he wants to be. And well, he's just going to pass back. If you're talking about the cards specifically, favorite hoplite versus just the queen, well, then all it takes is one spell for the hoplite to win it. That's true. Well, on the following turns, H Hornet Queen's probably got it. It's got his number. Yeah, chances are. Nelson does have a Doomway Giant in hand. Also has a Hornet Queen there. Looks like another land, too. He's going to start by sending in the red zone with the zombie and Sidisi. Trigger Sidisi. We'll take a look at the top three cards. Kiora, Hero's Downfall, and a Forest go in the graveyard, so no zombie will enter the battlefield. And Man is able to block as he'd like. And the 0-4 will get in front of Sidisi. Nelson trying to set him up for this. A Doomwake Giant giving everything minus one, minus one. Yeah, you're right. That's the fourth point of damage on that Lagana Band Trailblazer, so it should take it down. And what this does is this forces man, if he wants to keep his creature alive, to target it with a rogue with something like a God's Willing, something I imagine he doesn't want to use God's Willing on. So what seemed like a easy and obvious block, Nelson able to get some value from his Doomway Giant where he wouldn't get it otherwise. And now man's got some real work to do, as now there is a copy of a race to take care of Doomway Giant. Man will draw a card. It's a planes to go along with Ordeal of Thassa and Stubborn Denial. So the erase boarded in by man as a concession to Whip of Erebos. It's a card that he really can't let Brad have. It's decent against some of Brad's blockers, but once man's behind on the board, it's the last kind of card he wants to see in the matchup. There's the ordeal, trigger. Come in again, trigger. Brad can't block fast enough. And this is the thing I've noticed when watching Brad play against a rogue. This is the second time now. He's willing to chump block very, very quickly. Just don't take any damage. Yeah, he's very, he realizes just how much of a commodity his life total is here. Here's four mana. The way Brad loses is by taking enough incidental damage that on one turn, man can God's willing through a lethal attack. Brad knows that, doesn't want to let it happen. Excuse me, there's only three mana that was tapped to cast the Courser of Crucifix. You saw the top card was a copy of Sylvan Carry added, of course. That's a creature to go to the graveyard for Sidisi, so a zombie will be joining the party. Some damage is brought across here, and Nelson looks to be in the driver's seat. Reclamation Sage on top of the deck. And man is going to need to get a white ordeal online here. He's running low enough on life points that he's just going to lose the natural race if he's not careful. Battle-wise hoplite was the draw. Favorite hoplite currently a 3-4, looking to work its way towards a 4-5 and hopefully provide man with two cards that matter. Trigger, there goes the ordeal. Yeah. It'll complete the ordeal, get the reward of two cards, but he's gonna need a lot more. God's Willing and Temple of Enlightenment are the cards that Steve was able to find. Let's see if Nelson has any interest in blocking here. Again, he's been blocking very, very quickly. But Corsair provides such an advantage. It looks like he may want to leave that around, and the zombie can continue to get aggressive. His man's going to play the temple, scry the top card to the bottom. 11 to 9 are the life totals in favor of Nelson. The follow-up is a copy of Battlewise Hoplite and just a passing of the turn. Bioblight will go after the Hoplite. Brad's just going for lethal right here. If mm -hmm. man doesn't counter this, Brad has nine points of power on the table. Does have Stubborn Denial. This isn't the spell he wanted to be using Stubborn Denial. Not on. at all. But hey, it's in this situation, it's better than nothing, right? Well, I mean, 
and Brad has set this up. I mean, man has to use it if he has any, any, whether it's a God's willing or stubborn denial. I think right now man's picking which one he wants to hang on to. And if you've watched man play before, you know, nothing, he, he doesn't do anything very quickly because he doesn't want to give away information. I think that's part of the reason that man's pace of play is so methodical is just by immediately stubborn denial that, you know, you at least make him, make him think that you might have other options in your hand, even if you don't. Now, we know that he does in a card like God's willing, but, you know, that's part of the reason that the pace of play is methodical for Steven. I just don't want to give away information when he doesn't have to. Here's another bio blight. Yeah, you see players do that. It's a, the count to five rule. You'll see that a lot of times out of a control player that when your opponent tries to resolve a spell, you just quickly count to five before making a decision no matter what so that they don't know whether you're actually making a choice. The heroic here from Battlewise Hoplite will resolve. That means the scry will be the top card to the bottom. Now God's Willing is going to resolve, and it looks like the top card is going to go to the bottom yet again here for man. So God's Willing will save Battlewise Hoplite from Bioblight. He gets to scry one twice. Because of the stubborn denial and God's willing, man gets to survive this turn. However, he's surviving and winning are two very different things. Sidisi makes another zombie token as it turns over another copy of Sidisi. Battleways Hoplite will eat Sidisi, however. Some damage will come across. Brad with the follow-up. Perhaps it's time to cast that Reclamation Sage. It is. Sure, it doesn't have an enchantment to blow up, but that's not really what matters right now. It's about getting as much on the battlefield as he can. As man is at three, empty-handed. He'll take a draw. Looks like he has one other card in his hand. It's a land. It's about as close to empty-handed as you can be. We'll not see. to mention, Brad's next card's a real winner here. Yes, it is. See so life totals here, 11 to 3. Brad taking a look at Man's Graveyard, wants to make sure he's got as much information as possible before moving into his next turn. Remember, Brad was able to do all of this this game without casting the Hornet Queen that's still in his hand. Yeah. So it's hard to imagine a, a dead draw for Brad because, as you see, he hits something like, like a Kiora. Well, that's great. And if he hits a lander at any point here, well, then he gets to make Hornet Queen, and that's also pretty good. Favorite Hoplite. And a passing of the turn, as we've just been informed now that Tom Ross has just lost his match to Chris Van Meter. Van Meter playing Jeskai Tokens, Ross playing White Blue Heroic. And if you had Tom Ross in your fantasy drafts, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. It is not his tournament. For what he's is still got one chance, but he's going to have to win his next round or he'll yeah, be out. It's basically like the first time all year that it's not been Tom Ross's tournament. Yeah, an 0-3 start for Ross to finish at the bottom of his group was certainly, I don't think, what anybody expected. Unexpected to say the least. Informed right now that Gerard Fabiano, that was going to be our backup match against Kevin Jones, but Gerard Fabiano got the job done. So for Gerard, he 3 0'd his pod. He is on to Sunday competition. Congratulations to the freshly minted Grand Prix Baltimore champion, as here is a Kiora. So Gerard Fabiano, Brian Brondwin, first players into day two as your pod winners. Looking like Brad Nelson going to join them here as he takes down Stephen Mann. Brad Nelson does cast that thought seize man with just a land in the hand and Soul Tie Reanimator in the hands of former player of the year, Brad Nelson. Takes down Steven Mann playing white blue heroic and Nelson will be the third player on a Sunday competition. Congratulations to him. Yeah, both Brad Nelson and Gerard Fabiano, three owing their pods with Soul Tie. Different takes on it from each of the players. Brad with four copies of Sidisi, whereas Fabiano playing no Sidisi's in his 75, really? actually. Wow. Yeah, uh, Fabiano and Reed Duke actually, it looks like working on their list together was more of a classic control deck. But when you look at your group winners, uh, Abzan Agro from Brian Brondwin and these Sultai Reanimator decks from Fabiano and Nelson, you know, the three color mix.